Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to VR Roundup, episode 24, first one of the year, and a game in Friday, guys, wherever you are. Hope you're having a good game in Friday. Let me tell you, the uh, last couple of days around here, holy crap. Something I took for granted living on the West Coast. Well, Europe had some storms. I remember some big ones in Holland. And the reason they were bigger and nastier storms than they needed to be is, well, Holland is so damn flat. And big chunks of it, swaths of it, below sea level. So there were really no natural barriers for the wind. And in Vancouver, it was much the same. You've got Vancouver Island, you've got mountains on the other side, mountains on Vancouver Island. You get windstorms, but they were pretty far and few in between. Well, here on the East Coast, yeah, holy crap, not the case. Had my first experience of a nor'eastern, which uh, let's just say had me up pretty much all night, uh, freaking out that my house was going to do a Wizard of Oz and literally get taken off its foundation. Thankfully, they build them pretty well here. A lot of creaking and moaning, fast winds, no sleep, but that was about the extent of it. Oh, and my fence, I guess the wind had pushed it off its concrete kind of moorings by about 15 centimeters, half a foot. So had to prop it up with, uh, with a stick today. They'll be able to fix that in the spring. So yeah, first big eastern storm. But I'm here, and so is VR Roundup. So let's talk, first story, I want to talk about Vorpex. Now this is an application that in the past I've been, well let's just say it, pretty critical about. And the reason is I always found it a lot of effort. When, I, when I'm in the mood for a game, look, I don't mind tweaking once in a while, right? And I'll do that. If I get a new graphic card, I really get into tweaking settings and I'll load up a game, but I treat that game more as a benchmark. When I load up a VR game, it's usually because I want to play a VR game. And I found Vorpex to be very involved with settings. You'd have to go to Reddit. You had to go to forums. There was no one size fits all seemingly. In short, it needed and it could have benefited from some type of default settings database. And that is exactly, thankfully, direct VR settings optimizer that is present in the latest update, 17.3.0. And that uh, direct VR settings optimizer, well, it has a database of about 90 games and dials them in for what the dev says is essentially perfect field of view because that that's another setting that I struggled with was getting the right field of view for the right game. You've got lots of choices and settings to cycle through and again it wasn't a one size fits all. So with that said 17.3.0 out because I own the application and I haven't gotten any use out of it I don't think to date really yet. I'm going to try it this weekend. I'll probably talk about it in my first VR vlog, which I hope to release tomorrow. So look for that. Plan on experimenting with it tonight. Next up, Vive, hosting its CES 2018 press conference this upcoming January 8th. Well, today they sent out a tweet that seemed to tease a resolution update or upgrade for the Vive at some future point, either this year or beyond. Here's a look at the tweet itself. Make of that what you will. And just my two cents on that, it's a huge reason I'm such an advocate for modular design. It would be nice if VR HMDs at some point in the future were built to be more modular. In other words, you'd be able to take out the displays and, you know, put a 4K or an 8K when that technology becomes available inside it. Kind of like the concept of PCs. PCs tended to be modular for about as long as a motherboard chipset was relevant. And if you were lucky, sure, you could update the BIOS and, you know, you might be able to support the next CPU chipset or with that chipset. But generally, it was good for however many GPUs and peripheral cards would come out within the life cycle of a specific chipset that the motherboard was built for. Hopefully, at some point, 
like I said, VR, HMDs adopt a similar design. So we'll see what comes of this Vive headset. And next up, Oculus Home 2.0, getting a music system for Oculus Home. When I hear about software getting original audio, part of me worries that my choice or ambience in general is going to be taken away and possibly replaced by one of our more famous but domestically embarrassing exports. Not to worry here, Oculus just going to replace the Universal Oculus Home Music Score with 50 minutes of original and, thankfully, just and free audio. Music is going to cross several genres, electronic, orchestral, ambient, down-tempo, and even atmospheric rock. All of this composed by Michael Bross. Unfortunately, we're not able to pick our own music yet. Hopefully, though, that's something that they add in the future. I tend to not do too well when I'm in a position where I have no control. Take flying, for example. It's not the height that bothers me, because it's not open heights. It's the fact that I have someone who I can't freaking see controlling my fate and the fate of the hunk of metal I happen to be sitting in and cruising around at, well, 30,000 feet, you know, 10,000 meters. It's that same thing that makes me a pretty bad car passenger and driverless cars have to be the ultimate extension of that. It's not only a lack of complete control, it's as an IT guy knowing how buggy and unreliable software can be. So the last frickin' thing I will be doing in a driverless car is putting on a virtual reality helmet and pretending I'm somewhere else while a car drives me around. As the article from Upload VR correctly points out, what if there's a sudden obstruction on the road and you screech to a stop within VR? Can you imagine anything more traumatizing? I can't. Well, that is exactly what Ubisoft and Renault have partnered to provide. Oh joy. Thankfully, they are giving themselves until the mid-2020s to iron out the kinks. To me, another one of the strengths of VR is the ability to train people on the use of control panels, and as resolution tracking and haptics continue to evolve, that ability is only going to get better. Take Tribe VR DJ School for example, it's an app from Devs Tribe VR. They specialize in creating applications with a focus on training real world skills. In this app, you learn to control and use high-end Pioneer DJ equipment in the form of two digital decks and a mixer. You learn the basics of operation, topics like adjusting equalizers, crossfading. Of course, there's also a free mode to just freestyle your own creations or practice what you have learned or might happen to already know in real life. And next up, the 3D Rudder by the company of the same name. 3D Rudder provides the ability to, with your feet, move forward, backward, strafe left or right, rotate, even move up and down all from your chair. Now, I personally think VR is a platform that, like the PC or console, can cater to multiple controller devices, particularly and specifically when it comes to cockpit style games, because there are so many. Standing and room scale games, they tend to cater better to the default VR controls, controls like the Touch or the Vive Wand, and those devices likely are going to evolve kind of in that, you know, catch-all direction of being the best devices for standing and room scale. But when it comes to seated, now or in the near future, it's unlikely that those same default VR controllers are gonna offer a better experience than, for example, playing a racing game with a wheel-pedal combo or HOTAS for space flight, etc. Where I see this device specifically really coming into its own, guys, and it's 2018, I get a free two or three of these every year until somebody frickin' comes out with one. I'm talking about the perfect mech game for VR that no company has yet freaking made. I don't know why, but here we are, 2018, still talking about it. So here we go. Imagine, guys, if you will, MechWarrior 2 style gameplay. For me, though, preferably more MechWarrior Mercenary. RPG, salvage other people's mechs, get parts, upgrade skills, and 
perform upgrades on your mech, all while seated at your desk with your HOTAS. I think a mech game would just rock with a HOTAS controller and one of these 3D rudder type devices for your feet to control your mech with. That would almost be perfect. Perfect virtual reality. Now we just need somebody to create said mech game. I understand there's some mech games out there already, but there's none that even come close to the mech game that I have right up here in the old noggin that sadly nobody has yet made. But hopefully 2018 E3, we get the announcement we're waiting for, or one of the ones in a long development cycle, well, comes a little closer to fruition. Guys, that is it for VR Roundup on this Game and Friday. Like I said, hopefully you guys are having an awesome Gaming Friday. I'm hoping for a little less wind so I can actually sleep tonight and get some gaming in myself. Guys, have a fantastic weekend. Hopefully catch you tomorrow or Sunday with the first VR vlog. Cheers, guys.